Let's go over to Santa Ana, California and our continuing efforts to move around the United States. On April 30, 1987, this guy named Bill Carroll, uh, he was an ex-con and he operated this notorious Mustang Ranch. It was a topless bar, strip place, blah, 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 in Santa Ana, California. So he's sitting in a parked car just outside the parking garage of the Orange County, California Performing Arts Center and he's shot in the back of the head three times. The shooters toss the gun, take him, throw him out of the car and take off. Remarkably, Carroll survives. Uh, 38 caliber severed, a, severed the optic nerve and it left him blind for life. Another one just went through him and the, the third bullet remains lodged in his brain. So for 18 months, Carroll's in the hospital. He says nothing, absolutely nothing. He's got a bank fraud case against him. It's serious stuff. He's going to do serious time in prison as a blind guy. So he works a deal, apparently. It's knocked down to a misdemeanor level. Uh, he doesn't get any jail time. He pleads guilty. Everybody's happy. Then he begins to sing. He tells everybody what happened. Carol said he was eating at an Italian restaurant. It's called uh, Emilia's with Mike Rizzatello, uh, who was in, with the Milano crime family uh, in, in L.A., and Joseph Grosso, who was a, kind of a hanger on -er guy, not really an associate, just a nobody. So after dinner, Rizzatello and Grosso and he are in the car. They park around the Performing Arts Center in a darkened area near the garage. And Rizzatello says, this is for not letting us eat. In other words, not doling out more cash to us from the club. Grosso grabs Carol and Rizzatello pumps three bullets into his head. Move back now. Rizzatello is a really interesting guy. He's a one-man crime wave. He'd been with the Profacis in New York, and when Joey Gallo rose up against Joe Profaci in the Civil War, I think kind of amazingly, because Rizzatello is an opportunist, he leaped over with Joey Gallo. He probably took part, he was in fact the gunner in, in a double murder in New York in 1961 uh, at the Hi-Fi Lounge. He killed John Grugigalia and Paul Risi. He walked in, blew him away. A lot of people saw it. It was a daylight thing. Um, then he ventures west. Actually, he had been out west since 1959, but he more or less made his home out there after the 61 murders. And he worked a deal with the Chicago outfit, New York mobs, and that they would consolidate the porn industry out there. Um, and they did well, by the way. So he worked in the meantime as a debt collector, as an extortionist for this guy named Dago Louis Piscopa, uh, and a friend of his, Louis Castigaloni. Uh, Rizzatello was ment mentored in, in all, during all this by a guy named Josica. I've talked about him in the past, the Seeker brothers. They were big, big pornographers. Um, they financed the film of Dietro, and they made millions and millions from it. So in 1962, Rizzatello is sent to prison for nine years. He had gone around Hollywood just robbing restaurants, one after the other. He's in prison, and he meets William Carroll, the guy he would later shoot. Uh, in the 80s, they were all out of prison. Carroll is the manager of the Mustang Club. And he's paying Rizzatello about 5000 a week of protection money. That wasn't enough for Rizzatello. Um, also, at the same time, Rizzatello is convicted with uh, Samuel Scorantino, Louis Dragna, uh, Tom Lissokiro, and Dominic Bouquillier, the heads of the L.A. mob. And for trying to take over the city's pornography and bookmaking businesses. They almost did it, too. Rizzatello is sentenced to five years in prison for racketeering. He, in 1983. He gets out in 1987. They, uh, this is a month after he shot Carroll, he's convicted for selling one million worth of stolen bonds. I mean, this guy is relentless. Anyway, within days of shooting Carroll, Rizzatello is, essentially moves into the Mustang bar and he tells the new guy in charge, look, Bill Carroll ate alone. He didn't pay us enough. So smarten up or you're next. Whoa. And he gets a bump by another 5000 He's making 10000 a month off of this place. I can't imagine bars make that much. I guess they do. And it's all unreported income uh, from the club. Something to point out, James Lee Casino, who had been the previous manager before Carroll, was shot dead in his home by persons unknown for reasons unknown. There's some evidence, or some suspect anyway, that Carroll, 
who took over from Casino may have shot Casino or may have been somewhat involved with it. In 1976, uh, Louis Piscopo sponsors Rizzatella to become a made member of the Mafia. Uh, he does. He gets sent away from prison. Uh, he does four years. And when he comes out, he works for Jimmy Fratiano, who is now the boss in L.A. He's going to be his capo regime. Then in 1977, the Chicago uh, mobs gets in touch with Rizzatella. They tell him, go out for us to Las Vegas. There's a guy out there named Mo Dalitz. We need a million bucks cash from him. The FBI got tipped off by Fr Fratiano, who at this point was an informant, and they stopped the, the extortion. By the way, Mo Dalitz, if you don't know, is really the guy who built Las Vegas as we know it today. Uh, he, he did everything. He rose. He got hospitals out there. Uh, he made it into a city as opposed to just a gambling stopover. So in 1978, the new boss is Dominic Bocalier, a really interesting guy, uh, an attorney at law. Wow. I mean, but a, a made member of the mafia. So he tries to get Rizzatillo to set Jimmy Fratiano up for murder because they they feel Fratiano, Fratiano's ratting them all out. Uh, it didn't quite work at the same time to make this even more confusing. Fratiano has talked Rizzatello into murdering Russell Buffalino, who was the head of the crime uh, families in Pennsylvania, uh, but they both get acquitted on that charge. Rizzatello, now it's 1986, and Pete Milano is running the L.A. mobs. So Milano and Rizzatello, they, they worked together in the 70s, but it was a strange relationship. They didn't get along well. So Rizzatello goes back to the Gambinos in New York. He says, look, I want to start my old family here. And they're mulling it over, and there's a good chance it could have happened. Uh, in the interim, it was arranged for him to run his own little crew, like a quasi-family, inside the Milano family. Um, he mentored a guy named Anthony Fiato, who's online, by the way. He's got a great spot called, I think, L.A. Gangster. Uh, a lot of inside information there. Uh, this is in the 1980s. Uh, Friato later became a government informant. Then, just as things are really starting to take off for Rizzatello, he might get his own family, so forth, he shoots Bill Carroll and all hell breaks loose. Eventually, Rizzatello and Grosso were convicted in attempted murder for uh, Carroll and sent to life prison, uh, prison for life. Rizzatello died of complications of cancer at age 78, so he didn't really spend much time in there at all.